Welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we do have a doctor in the house from time to time, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing we say on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check in with a trusted medical professional about your own personal medical concerns. Hello and welcome to Keto Life Support. This is episode number 146. On today's episode, we are going to discuss Weight Watch Us. So I did some YouTube videos about these things as well. So if you've seen those, you've already heard me on this rant, although I recorded this separately. So my words are in a different order. But just in case you're like, why does this sound familiar? Uh, you may have watched a video of me talking about this topic. When I was a kid, I did Weight Watchers. I actually did it at 13, I think. And by the time I was 15, I was pretty much done with Weight Watchers. So I have been absent from the Weight Watchers sphere for many years, besides, you know, seeing the commercials on TV where they tell you, you can eat bread. And then a few years ago, they had a big campaign where they put a lot of money behind articles saying bad things about keto. And those are pretty much my touch points around Weight Watchers for the last few years. And I got kind of curious as we came into January and I said, well, let me check out the app and see what it's like these days. And I have to say, it's a very pretty app and it's fairly easy to use. And, but, you know, I had to figure out how the heck do I use this app? Cause it was just an app and it was basing things on points value. And so I had to, I would look up foods and I would put them in there and it asked me some questions like what I weighed and what my goals were and how tall I was. And then it told me if I wanted to lose weight, I should eat 23 points with four average daily uh, weekly points. So there's like a weekly budget that you can add to your daily budget. So my daily budget was 23. My weekly budget was 28. So if I divide that by seven, that's an extra four points a day. Or I could save those weekly points up. Like I could have a ton. I'd have basically a whole day's food plus added to one day or I could spread it out over the week. And also, if I did exercise, I could also add points from that. So let's say I did uh, a half an hour to an hour's exercise a day and like not super hard. If it was harder, it could be shorter. One for an hour long walk, that's an example. Then I could have like 29 points a day on average. And if I didn't do any exercise, I could have like 27 from there, what I did is I would go into a day in the app and look up foods and figure out what their point values were. And then I could have that for the day. And the rules were in the app said, you know, if you stay under your points, but you don't want to go too far under your points, but if you stay at your points budget, that you'll lose weight or you'll, you know, reach your goals. It said that the points were based on several things. I will read it to you. Every food and beverage gets a points value based on its overall nutritional information. Calories are considered with saturated fat and added sugar driving the point value up while fiber, protein, and unsaturated fat lower the point value. So basically it says calories are considered. That's the first thing it says. So you start with calories and then it goes up or down based on how much saturated fat, how much sugar, how much fiber, how much protein. And so there's some sort of clearly some sort of algorithm working in the background. So supposedly, though, if I follow these points, I'm going to end up losing weight. What I did then is I found out there was something called zero point foods, which I think there was something related back when I did Weight Watchers. I think they were called free foods or something. But zero point foods are a list of foods that have zero points. They included all vegetables, non-starchy veg. You could have beets, which are pretty high in sugar, but you couldn't have a potato. I mean, you can have a potato, but they cost points. They aren't zero points, but beets... Celery, every kind of non-starchy veg you can think of is zero points. Fruits, all fruits were zero points, all non, like no fat fruits, like coconut wasn't included, but like I could have bananas up the wazoo. Then there were some protein sources, but they had to be very, very lean. So chicken breast, turkey breast, non-fat Greek yogurt, non-fat cottage cheese, and then some legumes. And um, then there were some grains. So only air pop popcorn that was in the grains category. 
And then also under the proteins were eggs, which was good news. That was the only thing that had any fat in it was the eggs were zero point foods. I'm so glad they have those in there though. So basically the instructions I got were plan your day to include some zero point foods. It says zero point foods don't cost any points and don't need to be tracked because they don't have any points. Then it says again, zero point foods, eat these foods without spending points. Reach for these nutritional powerhouses as meal bases or to pump up flavor or as simple snacks without impacting your budget. You don't have to weigh, measure, or track these foods. So I did that. I put them into a day and I figured out I could basically have an enormous amount of food utilizing zero point foods and then totally blow my food budget in a way that I would not lose any weight if I use these foods, because I would honestly abuse these foods to be really clear and honest. The problem is if I put myself back in my mindset that I had when I was almost 300 pounds, I didn't know what abusing food really looked like. I mean, I had a sense that I felt guilty, but I tended to only feel guilty when I had like foods I thought of as bad, like fast food and sweets. But, you know, I always thought, oh, popcorn, that's really low. And then, you know, obviously when I went keto, I had some different ideas. But ultimately, I just think the zero point foods can get you into too much trouble because I I don't know that I know what an appropriate amount to eat is. And the app doesn't help me with that. And by me, I mean like the me I was before I lost 100 pounds, right? The me that needed this app or a app or something. And so, it's, I think it's just too dangerous because when you go into the app, it's not like it's like, oh, I can have a banana and it's zero points. I could have 12 bananas and it's still zero points. And if the app wanted to, it could have said, okay, one banana is free, but two bananas starts to cost you, right? And they didn't put any of that in the app, which means people are absolutely going to abuse that. And there's no real warning about any of it. Now, obviously, if you ask questions, attend meetings, watch YouTube videos, you might get some education, you know, because people on these various videos and in places will be like, oh, look out for too many of these foods, or maybe limit those foods, or don't go beyond this limit, right? But it's not in the app. And so then I will say somebody brought up the question, what does it look like when you put your normal diet into the Weight Watchers app? And so I planned a day. And if you want to see pictures of this, you can go to my Instagram and see. I'll try and post a link in the notes here to those pictures. But basically a standard day that I would eat if I were trying to lose weight. So espresso, some pumpkin pancakes for breakfast with protein powder and eggs and some Greek yogurt on top, some sugar-free syrup, some turkey bacon, a lunch of bunless burger with some burger sauce I made, and for dinner, like a strip loin and some cauliflower rice super easy day. And of course, my chocolate creamy for dessert, 1450 ish calories, quite a bit of protein, moderate carbs around 41, because I eat moderate carbs. These are I mean, low, I eat low carb, I should say, but not 20 or under, right. And what did that come out to points wise? Remember, my budget at max is 28 to 29 points, came out to 37 points for this day. It's a 1450 calorie day. That is not a high calorie day. And yet I am nine points over my daily allotment. That is a nine. So nine, 18, that's like almost a third over my daily allotment. And yet when I gamed the app, because if anyone doesn't think a food addict knows how to game a food app, they're lying to themselves. I planned a day that worked within the rules, right? I was like, I'll play by their rules. And um, came up with a 28 point day for 2300 calories. Very different. So 28 points, 2300 calories, 37 points, 1450 calories. That doesn't make any sense to me. And then I played around with the app some more and I came up with a 28 point day that was not even 1100 calories. So I could make a 28 point day that was less than 1100 calories. And I could make a 28 point day that came up as well over 2000 calories. And I'm sure I could have maybe gone even further. I could have just kept adding eggs. And eventually, and now granted, I understand, eventually you get tired of eating eggs or, or whatever. But what I did to test this out is I actually made all the food from the Weight Watchers approved 28 calorie day and I fed it to my boyfriend. And it was a fair amount of food. 
but it certainly wasn't more food than I used to eat when I weighed a lot more. And looking at the food, I would have found myself to be very full that day, but I could have managed to eat all that food. It was not actually like a crazy amount of food. It just had a lot of snacks and snacks aren't very filling. So what else did I learn? Well, when I poked around on the internet, I found people on Weight Watchers, not everybody, not throwing stones. I'm not casting aspersions, but a lot of people who do Weight Watchers are obsessed with snacks, which is why I added so many snacks to my 28 point day. And I learned, oh, use this snack. It's lower points. Use that snack. It's lower points. There was a lot of advice about snacks and points. And so I was able to navigate some of this advice to get as much food as possible in my appropriate point day. And so when I was looking at all of this put together, it occurred to me that if I had tried to lose weight using this app back before I really learned how to lose weight for my body, and I just put my trust in this app, I would have ended up feeling even more broken, even more damaged, even more like I can't lose weight because there's something wrong with me. It wouldn't have occurred to me that the app is what was the problem. And that is what upsets me. And what I came to trying a bunch of different permutations into the app is that it suddenly made sense to me why Weight Watchers had to say so many negative things about keto, because low carb diets don't really work very well in this app. The other thing is that I have a lot of little points that are bothering me. Whining now um, is that in the app, as an example, right, zero fat. Greek yogurt is zero points. 2% Greek yogurt is a lot of points, which is part of why my day got fairly high in points when I was putting food in that I normally eat. But I eat yogurt generally. I mean, I will eat non-fat yogurt sometimes, but I will generally want to eat yogurt with some fat in it. Why is that? Well, yogurt is a great source of K2 if it has fat in it, because K2 is a fat-soluble vitamin. Why do I want to eat K2 with my yogurt? Well, because K2 tells your body where to put calcium. And I want my calcium in my bones and not in my arteries, right? And so there are reasons to thoughtfully eat some dairy fat. And the app really discourages the use of any fat of any kind that is saturated, including dairy fat, which tends to be saturated. However, saturated dairy fat tends to be high in proportion of stearic acid, which of the saturated fats is found to be either neutral or beneficial and not negative. And I'll say not everyone thinks saturated fat is negative, but I'm talking even from a mainstream perspective. The other thing is that eggs are in there. Eggs have some saturated fat in there. So I could put an egg in my non-fat yogurt and stir it up and it would have the same amount of fat as 0% yogurt would have. And yet that's allowed and the other one isn't. So basically I'd like to say, I don't like arbitrary rules, even if they're kind of almost sort of based in some logic, but the logic doesn't carry through. So even if I were saying, well, the calorie part is not super accurate, and so I wouldn't trust it for weight loss, but maybe it's going to teach people kind of how to eat a little healthier. And certainly it might teach you some things, like if you had no idea that a brownie was probably a worse choice than like, I don't know, an apple or an egg, then then yeah, then it's going to give you some information you didn't have. But at the end of the day, people join Weight Watchers to lose weight. Let's not kid ourselves here. And I could make so many different effects happen with this app. I could gain weight. I could lose weight. I could stay the same weight. I can make all of that happen, staying in the same points total. So ultimately, it angered me using this app because of that. And at the end of the day, you should basically be learning the reality of calories and macros. What does protein do in your body? What do carbs do to you? How do you react to these foods? Instead of how does Weight Watchers algorithm judge you based on your food choices? So you either did well or did poorly and you were in or you were out of bounds based on these choices when it doesn't really impact directly whether you're going to lose or gain weight. Now, I don't want to deny that people do lose weight using the Weight Watchers app. They absolutely can. But when I poked around online and found people who were successful with the app, most of them ended up saying 
Yeah, what I had to do was after I used the app for a while, start to look into calories and plan my days and my weeks based on making sure I'm within my right calorie range in the app. So I stuck to points, but I also looked at calories. So I had to evaluate those two things together. And I have some news for you. You could have just looked at the calorie part. (laughs) You don't have to. So it's like I did this part that kept me occupied and busy and entertained. And I also had to look at this other part that actually has an effect on my weight, right? And so if you love the app, if you love the community, if you love the products, if you love eating a high carb diet, then maybe the app would work for you. But you have to cross reference it with what are good choices for weight loss, because quite honestly, I couldn't figure out how the app would would tell you that at the end of the day. Now, again, some of you may have found success. Some of you may have just naturally gravitated towards a way of eating within the app that just was a lock and key fit for you and worked out super well. And if it works for you, I'm not going to tell you to change it. But for the average person coming into this, wanting to learn about food, wanting to learn about health, wanting to learn about their body, I believe from my perspective, if they were anything like me, they would have ended up more frustrated, more sad, and more broken feeling after trying to put their trust in this app rather than something that just tells them facts, like a macro tracking app. So that's my opinion. Take it or leave it. And I will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Keto Life Support. Want more information? Want show notes? Want to suggest a topic? Just head over to ketolifesupport.com. That's where all that kind of thing can go on. By the way, I have a request. If you could go to your podcast host and hit subscribe, we would really, really appreciate it. And what would be even more awesome is if you could write a review. And what would be even more awesome than that is if you could write like a really flattering review. Just asking, you know, you do you. All right. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm thrilled that you're part of the Keto fam. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.